Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's coverage here. Monaco took a trip all the way out here to cover the Monaco Crypto Summit. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. A lot of action happening presented by Digital Bits and this ecosystem that's coming together, building on top of Digital Bits and other blockchains to bring value at the application. These new apps, super apps are emerging. Almost every category is going to be decentralized. This is our opinion and the world believes it. Uh, and they're here as well. We got Oscar Belli, CEO, co-founder of Agoraverse. Agora is a shopping metaverse. Coming out soon, we'll get the dates. Oscar, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much for having me. We That's were just honor. talking before we came on camera. You're a young gun, young entrepreneur. <laughs> You're a gamer. A little bit too old, missed the eSports window, as you said, you're only 25, it's great. <laughs> so that's when you missed the window, I wish I was 25. Um, gaming, the pandemic with remote work, big tailwind, acceleration around the idea of this new digital vi virtual hybrid world we're living in, where people want to have experiences that are similar to physical and virtual. You're doing something really cool around yeah. shopping. Yeah. Take a, explain what's going on. When's it, you, I know it's not out yet, it's in preview. Yeah. Take a minute to explain. Absolutely. So, Agoraverse really is um, a way to create those online storefront environments, virtual environments that are really much inspired by video games in their usage and kind of how the experience goes forward. We want to recreate um, the brand's theme, aesthetic, storytelling, or the NFT project as well. All of that, create that in a, a virtual setting, which is way more interesting than looking at a traditional web page. And also, you can do some crazy stuff that you can't do in real life, in a real life store, you know, and with some crazy effects and lighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a whole new frontier that we are trying to cover, and we believe that there is a real use case um, for shopping-centric metaverse experiences, and to actually make the metaverse um, a bit more than a buzzword than it, that it is at the moment. Okay, so Agora is the shopping metaverse. Agoraverse is the company name yep. and product name. You're on the Solana blockchain, got my notes here. But I got to ask you, I mean, people are trying to do this right now. We see a lot of high-end clients like Microsoft Showroom, Showroom Vibes. Yeah. Not so much e-commerce per se, but mm -hmm. more like the big, I mean, it's low-hanging fruit. Yeah. How do you guys compare to some of these other apps out there, other metaverses? I think, um, Compared to the bigger companies, we are way more flexible and we can act way more quickly than they can. They still have a lot of ground to cover and a lot of convincing to do with their communities of users. Metaverse is not really the most popular topic at the moment. It's still very much kind of looked at as a trend, as something that is just passing. And they have to deal with this community interaction that is not really favorable for them. There are other questions about the metaverse um, that are not being talked about as often, but the ecological costs, for example, of running a metaverse like uh, Facebook envisions it of running those virtual headsets, running those environments. It's very costly on on, on the uh, ecological side of things, and it's um, not as often mentioned. And I think that's actually their biggest challenge. Uh, Can you give an example them. for folks that don't are in the weeds on that? What's the, what's yeah. the, what do you mean by that? The cost to build the headsets? Is it the servers? It's more of the servers, really. You need uh, to run a lot of servers, which is really costly on the environment. And environmental questions are at the center of public debate anyways. And companies have to play that game as well. So they will have to find kind of this balance between, well, building this cool metaverse, but doing it in an ecological friendly manner as well. I think that's their toughest challenge. And what's your solution? Just using the blockchain? Well, an answer to that, because yeah. some people say, hey, that's not, that's, yeah. that's not so eco-friendly either. That's part of it, and it's also part of why we are choosing an ecosystem such as Solana as a starter. It's not limited to only Solana, but Solana is, is known as a blockchain that is very much ecological inclined. Uh, transactions are um, less polluting, and uh, definitely uh, this problem is, is tackled uh, in the fact that we are offering this product on a case-by-case -case scenario. Brands come to us, we build this environment, and we run something that is proper to them. So the scale of it is also way less important than what Facebook is trying to build. Yeah, they're trying to build the all-encompassing, yeah. all-singing, all-dancing, as we say, yeah. system. And they're not, they're not getting a lot of luck. They just got slam dunked this week on, on the news. I saw the uh, you know, FTC moved against them on the acquisition yeah. of the, uh, the exercise app. Yeah. It's, it's a tough, it's, it's a tough <laughs> battle for them. I'd say they still they have got a headwind. I wouldn't say yeah. tailwind. <laughs> they broke democracy, so they got to pay for it, right? Exactly. As I, I always say, definitely revenge going on there. I'm not a big fan of what they did. The FTC, I think that's a bad move. They shouldn't block acquisitions, but they do buy. They don't really build much. 
that's well documented. Facebook really hasn't built anything except for Facebook. That's right. I mean, yeah. what's the one thing Facebook has done besides Facebook? I mean, uh, it's, it's everything they've tried has failed, <laughs> except for Facebook. Yeah, so we'll see what's going on with the metaverse side <laughs> well, of like things. Like Facebook's but... so successful, not really. One trick pony. Yeah. They bought Instagram. They bought WhatsApp. You know, that's they're true. not really successful. Mm, that's true. They, they do have. The, the means, though, to maybe become successful with some things. So if you're watching out there, oh, John just said Facebook's not successful. I meant they, <laughs> don't, they have a one product company, they use their money to buy everything. Yeah. Uh, and that's, some people don't like that. But anyway, the startups like it if they get bought out. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's get back to the metaverse. It's coming yeah. out. Is the business model to build for others? Are you going to have a system for users? What's what's the approach? How do you how are you viewing this? What's the the business you're going after? So we are very much um, a B two B type of service uh, where we can create um, custom kind of tailor made virtual environments for brands where we dedicate our team to building those environments, which has been what we have been at the start to really kickstart the initiative. But we're also developing uh, the tool that will allow anybody to develop their own shop uh, themselves using what we gave them to do, something kind of like The Sims, for those that know, uh, building their environment and building their shop, which will they, they, they will then be to put online and for anybody of their user base customers to have a look at. So it's, it's kind of, yeah, the tailor-made experience, but also the more broader experience where we want to create this tool, develop this tool, make it accessible to the public with a subscription-based model, where any individual that has an idea and maybe a product that is interesting for the metaverse um, be able to create this virtual storefront and upload it directly. How long does it take to build an environment? Let's say I, was, I want to do a cube. Yeah. I go to a lot of venues all around the world, yeah. Moscone in San Francisco, mm. the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, we're here in Monaco. Um, how do I replicate these environments? Do I call you up and say, hey, I need some artists, do you guys render it? What's the, it's, take us through the process. Yeah, it's, it's basically um, a case-by-case -case scenario at the moment very much. We're working with our partners that find brands that are interested in getting into the metaverse, and we then design the shops. Um, well, it depends on the brand. Some have a really clear idea of what they want. Some are a bit more open to it, and they're like, well, we have this and this, can you build something? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I could see the Apple store saying, hey, you know, they're pretty something. standard Apple stores. Mm -hmm. You got cases with iWatches. Yeah. I mean, that's easily replicatable. Yeah, Probably exactly. a good ROI for them. Exactly. It's um, it's. Is yeah, that we, what you're thinking? Our team. Exactly. Yeah. We, it depends, and we, we want to add a layer of something because just replicating the store simply, yeah. it's it's maybe not as interesting. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, I'm in the store and it's white everywhere. It's Apple, right? It's like, oh, I'm, I'm in the, at the dentist. Um, but we want to add some video game elements to the, to those experiences, yeah. but very subtle ones, um, ones that won't make you feel, oh, I'm playing one of these games, you know. It's yeah. very subtle and you things. Can, and you can jump into an immersive experience as defined by the brand. Yeah. I mean, the brand will control the value. So if you're, say, Apple, and you're at the iWatch yeah. table, yeah. you could have a digital assistant pop in there with an avatar. Exactly. You can jump down a rabbit hole and say, hey, I want this iWatch. I'm a bike mountain biker, yeah. for example. I could get experience of mountain biking with my watch on. I fall <laughs> off, ambulance picks me up. I mean, all these things that they advertise, that's what goes on. Yeah, and we can recreate these experiences and what they're advertising and yeah. into a more immersive experience is what we're trying to do. Our, our goal is to create experiences. We know that, you know, why does someone, is, someone spend so much at Disneyland? Uh, it's like triple the price of whatever. <laughs> because, you know, it's Mickey Mouse around you. Yeah. It's, that's yeah. the experience that comes around and often the experience is more important than the product. Sometimes. Yeah. It's hard, it's really hard to get that first class citizen experience with the event or venue physical, yeah. uh, which is being challenged. I know the metaverse is going to try to solve this. So I got to ask you, what's your vision on solving that? What, okay, because that's the holy grail. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. I got a physical event or place. Mm. I want to replicate it in the metaverse, but create that just as good first party citizen-like experience. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole event, man, event type of business side of the metaverse is also a huge one. Um, it's one that we're choosing to tackle after the e-commerce one, mm -hmm. but it's definitely something that has been asked a lot by the brands. We're like, we want to create like, we want to release this store for an event that is in real life, but we want to make it accessible yeah. to the largest number. That's why we saw with Fortnite as well, all those events, uh, the Fashion Week in the Central Land. Sandbox. There's a cube in uh, Fortnite too. Well, they, I mean, they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And so the, the event aspect is super important. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we want to, those meta shops to be places where a brand can organize an event. Let's say they want to make um, the entrance paid. They can do an NFT for that if they want. And then they have to, the user has to connect the NFT to access the event. That's an idea, right? But that's definitely yeah. possible. Yeah. And that's how we leverage blockchain as well with those companies and say, you know, you're not yeah. familiar with Access it. Access method, are. your badging. You, you know, you're the gaming world we were talking earlier. Yeah. Badging and credentials and access methods, yeah. a tech concept, can be easily ported to NFTs. Yeah. 
exactly. Easily. Exactly, and, and brands are interested in that. Yeah, sure. of course, yeah. <laughs> By being the NFT, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, so I got to ask you the origination story. Take me through the, the uh, how this all started. Yeah. Was it a seed of an idea? You and your friends get together. Yeah. Yeah. Was it an itch you were scratching? Were you really into this? What's the origination story and where you're at now? So we started off uh, in January, really, uh, with a quite a, a different idea. Uh, it was called the Lofts Business Club. It's an NFT collection on the Solana blockchain. And the whole idea behind it is that NFT holders would have access to their virtual apartments that we called the Lofts. It got very popular. We got a really big following at the start. It was really the trend back in January, February. And we managed to, to sell out successfully the whole collection of 5,000 NFTs. And yeah, we started as a group of friends, uh, really like-minded uh, friends from my hometown in, uh, in Metz in France, um, who are today the co-founders and uh, the associates um, with different backgrounds. Uh, Leo has the marketing side of things. Uh, Claude has the 3D designing. We had all our different yeah. skills coming into it. Obviously, my English was quite helpful as well because French people in English, it's, it's not often the, yeah. the best French. French. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Amory, who is the COO, uh, has been doing amazing on the kind of the serious stuff, you know, the, Taxis, yeah. uh, lawyers, all the, the operational, whole... ta all the trains yeah, running on time, exactly. so, making sure people get their jobs done. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it, it's do well, do long of a lunch because you know in French you take what two hour lunches. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, know, you have to enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> coffee and stuff. Glass of wine, you know, more creative. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a friend stuff that started yeah. as a as a passion project and it got so quick. And yeah. today I'm here talking to you in this setting. It's like you're pretty excited. I mean, it's super excited. It's such yeah. a we're you know we feel like we're building something that's new. Um, and our developer team, we're now a team of 15 in total with developers uh, yeah. based in Paris mostly. And everybody is, is feeling like, you know, they're contributing to something new. And yeah. that's what's exciting about it. You know, it's something that's not really done or yeah. it's trying to be done, but nobody really knows the it's way. It's pioneering days, and, yeah. but, the, but the pandemic has shifted the culture uh, faster because people are like, certainly the Gen Z's are like, I don't want to use that old stuff. Yeah. And, but they still want to go to like games or events. Uh, or go to stores, yeah. um, but once you go to a store, I mean, I go to the Apple store all the time where I live in Palo Alto, California, mm. it's like, yeah, I love that store. I mean, yeah. And you know, I know it by heart. I don't, if I don't have to go there, yeah. walking through the Genius Bar, virtually, I get the same job done. Yeah, exactly, that's, that's what we want to do. And yeah, the pandemic is just, it's, it's been all about improving, um, you know, people's condition, life conditions at home, I think, and that's what kind of boosted the whole metaverse conversation and Facebook really grabbing yeah. onto it as well. It's just that people were stuck at home and for gamers, that's fine. We're used to be stuck at home playing video games yeah. all day. We survived the pandemic fine, but for other people, it was a bit more of a new experience. Well, Oscar, one of the cool things is that, well, you said like mine, you and your founding team, always the secret to success, yeah. but now you see a lot of old guys like me and gals coming in too. You're smart people. <laughs> are like-minded, they get it, especially ones that have seen the ways before. When you have this kind of change, it's a cultural shift and technology shift and business model shift at the same time. Yeah. And to me, there's going to be chaos, but at the end of the day, I mean, there's fun know, and chaos. That's opportunity. It's a fun and fun and opportunity. It's fun and chaos, you know. And um, yeah, like-minded people. And the team has really been the driving factor with our company. We're all very much excited about what we're doing and it's been driving us forward. Well, keep in touch. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing you your so story much. with us uh, and the world. We really appreciate it. We'll keep in touch with you guys too. Love what you do. Oscar Bellet here inside theCUBE, Argoverse, e-commerce shop. The beginning of this wave is happening. The convergence of physical, virtual is a hybrid mode. It's a steady state. It is not going to go away. It's only going to get bigger, more cooler, more relevant than ever before. It's theCUBE covering it like a blanket here in Monaco, Crypto Summit. I'm John Furrier, we'll be right back after this short break.